Mark, could you maybe begin by talking a little bit about when you specifically got involved in the, the nuclear freeze movement and and also part two of that maybe is what what was your motivation? I mean, what sort of inspired you or, or motivated you to, to get involved in that kind of work? Before the freeze campaign, um, the, the whole uh, anti-war, nuclear, anti-nuclear uh, weapons campaign around Hiroshima and Nagasaki was, was big. We had Dr. Helen Caldicott come to town, the whole Physicians for Social Responsibility um, movement, and we had a local chapter of that, and we couldn't get enough physicians, uh, so I was the a treasurer, I believe, a secretary of the uh, local Physicians for Social Responsibility. And we did have... Uh, um, a good organizing strategy to try and uh, reach out and before um, the freeze campaign really took off we had artists for social responsibility we had um, architects for social responsibility a lot of other professions that uh, grabbed a hold of that same concept but it was a lot of showing uh, Helen Caldicott's movie um, and uh, the impact of uh, the nuclear weapons on on the human psyche and physical physical there was there was a very powerful movie we showed all the time in schools and, and churches on on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and then after that Dr. Holocaust's uh, movie but it, it was an evolution it, it was a it was a grassroots uh, movement uh, we were scared to death that uh, that the world was going to end uh, in the uh, 80s, especially when uh, Reagan's uh, election took place, and uh, his idea was simplistically uh, put by me, and I think his ideas were simplistic as well. Um, we're going to just drive the Soviet Union into the ground economically by uh, outspinning them and out armament them and threaten them with the mutual assured destruction and threaten that we were going to use the nuclear weapons. And that had a groundswell of, first of all, um, disempowering us, but then the, the groundswell was that people w took that back. And I can remember going to international conferences on development issues and hunger, world hunger issues, and there was strong discussions about um, the, the nuclear freeze campaign as a way of stopping that, uh, that strategy of, of Reagan uh, building up the nuclear arms race. And so it started at an international level, I was at international conferences in Helsinki and Belarus, uh, not Belarus, in Helsinki and in uh, Lake Balaton in Hungary, Hungary uh, outside of, um, of Budapest and, um, and in Oslo uh, uh, with the, the International Coalition for Development Action. But at those conferences on development issues was a groundswell of, of sharing about uh, an organ, organizing a nuclear freeze campaign internationally, and it it moved through uh, through the peace movement, uh, in the International League for Peace and Freedom, the American Friends Service Committee, local uh, and state organizations, international state and organ organizations, um, across. Uh, racial and, and class lines and uh, you know, a lot of labor movements were picking up on it on the disarm on the um, um, swords into plowshares kind of issues um, and um, my my sense of it was that it it was a synergistic movement that that was at the right time at the right place and that crossed over internationally and locally about at the same time. So what, you were talking late 70s that it came to kind of Grand Rapids, just prior uh, to the Reagan election? Late 70s, the whole anti-nuclear anti war um, uh, m movement was going on in the 70s. And that's when uh, Caldicott and the Hiroshima work and uh, I think her name was Barbara Reynolds. Uh, she was a Quaker and uh, connected with the University of Michigan, and she and her husband were in Hiroshima just weeks after the bombing, uh, working with the U.S. government to research medically what were the effects on the, on the human beings from that, and that changed their whole lives, and uh, she was networking with a very powerful movie on Hiroshima. So that was the precursor or the grounding that built uh, the 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 uh, the 
concern uh, before the, the nuclear freeze issue, seeds were planted in, the, in that fertile soil. Okay. So what was the focus of the organizing in Grand Rapids um, in terms of the freeze? And maybe if you could speak a little bit about what kind of tactics you were using to, to sort of further the goals of that organizing locally. Well, it was, um, we had a statewide committee. Um, it was coordinated through the Michigan Council of Churches and the different uh, religious entities. Um, and I was on the executive committee uh, and went to Lansing on a regular basis. And then we broke it down into congressional districts and there were local uh, headquarters uh, and local uh, um, offices throughout the state. Uh, we were trying to take advantage of the um, diverse peace movement throughout the state and give them a unifying focus. And each one of the organizations continued on their own tack of how they were expressing their concerns on nonviolence or other human rights issues, but we all coalesced around the nuclear freeze campaign specifically uh, to put it on um, the Michigan ballot, uh, Proposal E, um, to let the, uh, the public have a voice because we felt fairly voiceless. Uh, um, the first annual meeting of the Institute for Global Education uh, was the night Ronald Reagan was elected. And we knew he was elected before Francis Morlepe even spoke uh, about world hunger. So it was, a, it was an energizing uh, and, and a disempowering process at the same time. And the freeze campaign was really a cry out that we were going to take, meaning the popul populace was going to take back um, the issue of whether we were going to die in a nuclear holocaust or not. And, so the organizing was uh, strongly through the churches, uh, Catholic, Protestant, uh, Jewish, uh, um, whole range of, of, uh, of grassroots and, and national and international movements. I saw it at the World Council of Churches, the National Council of Churches, the Michigan Council of Churches. I saw it at the national levels of churches here, the Christian Reformed Church and the Reformed Church in America. The Catholic Church was huge in it. and. We broke ourselves down through uh, the YWCA office of the Institute for Global Education and had uh, people that were organized in getting out the petitions, people that were organized in speaking at the churches and uh, community groups and union groups about the issue of nuclear disarmament and freezing of the arms race. And um, we were building uh, a network to not only get it on the ballot, but win on the ballot. And once we did get it on the ballot, um, Kent County was the second largest uh, uh, per capita vote in favor of the nuclear freeze campaign next to Ann Arbor or, or Ypsilanti, uh, not Ypsilanti, uh, Washtenaw County. So we, we really did have a, a tremendous groundswell of, of organizing that crossed racial and class, and, and it wasn't all just white liberals. It was, uh, we had a task force on Central America and South Africa and the Middle East and uh, uh, peace education in the schools uh, and world hunger, and all of those task forces met every week together along with the disarmament nuclear freeze campaign at the YMC YWCA. And we would have a hundred people or more out uh, uh, at the committee, program committee, we called it, and they had those task forces um, that represented all the issues that we were working on. And whenever a campaign or a specific tactic or strategy needed to be developed around any one of those issues, we would network among our groups. Um, and we were all under the umbrella of the Institute for Global Education, including other organizations. Uh, like the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. They weren't very large, and, and they, there was a lot of collaboration and not a whole lot of turf, but uh, turf battles. But it was, it was getting new people coming in and, and some of the long-standing people taking leadership, and it was a grassroots uh, task force committee structure, and we raised money while we were uh, networking. I don't think you could get away with it today, but my memory was that we had we had uh, um, 
little placards or um, 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 when you cook, what is that called? When you put on your aprons, your aprons, aprons with the nuclear freeze campaign logo on it and pockets for the petitions and literature. And whenever they would go out to the different uh, stra uh, strategic places to get the petitions, then we would ask for donations. And I think it was a donation of, 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 of a dollar per signature. And we were not only paying for the printing and the networking, uh, but we were getting ready for the media campaign. We had a radio and television campaign around the nuclear freeze campaign. Uh, and some of the uh, media people volunteered and um, put together uh, powerful 30 seconds uh, TV slots that the state network decided where those were going to be uh, put. And then there were some national strategy meetings. I can remember organizing people going to Washington, D.C. and New York on strategy meetings as, as well. And that's what I realized how geographically how big Michigan is. Uh, when we tried to organize a busload from Michigan to go to Washington, D.C., it's as far from Marquette University up there to Detroit as it is to Detroit to Washington, D.C. So it was a big issue to try and pull the whole state together. But we got, my memory is over 370 some thousand uh, registered voters signing the petition, got it on the ballot, and we won the ballot and were able to go to uh, a whole delegation with the, the United Nations in, in New York, I think it was in 1982, where we presented uh, the petitions to the United Nations, along with um, in an international ground, groundswell. There was the governor, the mayor of uh, Hiroshima there and people from all over the world that were there giving their petitions. So it was, I can remember even going down the street from the uh, United Nations uh, headquarters of the United Methodist Church at 777, 777 UN Plaza and going in and meeting with the uh, Russian uh, delegation to the United Nations and, and uh, their equivalent to our Secretary of State and lobbying them on the nuclear freeze campaign. So it was it was it was it was a